I just turned 30. Why am I still single? If you asked me at 10 years old where I would be at 30, I would have said I'd have a big house, a few cars, and maybe even a boat. I cashed a check for $1 yesterday. As I look at all my friends wedding photos, wondering when they'll open up the refurbished waffle iron I got them, I can't help but ponder. How did monogamy become such a cultural norm in our society? Monogamy officially took form as marriage in the 1200s as a means of protecting bloodlines and creating alliances between families, back when the old ball and chain was more than a metaphor. Today's marriage culture influences women from a young age. With these princess fairy tales, you got little girls kissing frogs and marrying reptilians. And the whole wedding industry, with the bridesmaids and the dress and the hair and the makeup and the shower and the deodorant. And men get pressured too. The engagement ring should be three times his monthly salary. Fellas, quit your job once things start getting serious. Three times zero equals... Recent statistics show that almost half of marriages in the US end in divorce. Flip a coin on the altar. And that 50% of men and women cheat on their spouse. Hold on to that coin, you're gonna need it. That seven year itch may be more than your chronic psoriasis. There are two divorces every minute. So by the time it takes me to finish this sentence, you'll have already seen this joke coming. So why do people divorce? Restriction of freedoms, repression of desires, irreconcilable differences, which is legal jargon for the person I fell in love with makes me wanna work unpaid overtime eight days a week. Monogamy is challenging. That's where our world is set up with outlets like strip clubs and pornography as a way of releasing all this pent up energy. Growing up, the only person clearing more internet history than me was my dad, and he wasn't as good at it. Cookies, Michael, they're more than a snack. The fact of the matter is, by virtue of gay's anatomy, I'm much less likely to pursue the traditional married with kids lifestyle. I'm not sure if I'll ever get married. I prefer to do things when they're not legal. Seems much cooler. Sometimes I think about what my wedding would look like. It's gonna be a logistical nightmare. Who's gonna walk me down the aisle? My mom. And what about the slow dances? Who am I supposed to dance with? His dad? There's not gonna be any wedding activities. There's no bouquet, there's no garter. I'm supposed to do pull off his jock strap and toss him to the crowd. I'm also less likely to have children. I don't have to worry about unexpected pregnancies. It's just not that easy to make that mistake. No gay guy's ever been like, oh dude, I got so hammered last night, ended up drunk dialing this surrogate, wiring her 50K, ejaculating into a cup, putting my semen through a centrifuge and inserting a catheter of sperm into her uterus. Last time I do shots of tequila. My initial feelings about open relationships could be summed up by the question, is it laying in bed or pathologically lying in bed? When I was a kid, I never anticipated having to navigate these waters. There's no children's book about two boys who fall in love and buy a house and live happily ever after for a few years and then begrudgingly open up their relationship. I have insecurities, I get jealous. I don't even want my boyfriend getting a prostate exam. I'm like, there's a multiple choice one now, Obamacare. I don't think I'm alone on that. Guys say they're comfortable opening up their relationship, cut to a threesome, they're in the corner using their tears as lube. I've endured a lot of pain from relationships, and one day I reached my breaking point. I was in a hurt locker, and not least because I was given Arabian goggles the night before. But that day, I decided I would no longer let the actions or opinions of someone else determine my self-worth. Did you guys like all that? I wasn't sure if it was good enough. The statistic for the gay community is split down the middle. 50% are in monogamous relationships and 50% are networking on Grindr. So both lifestyles are possible. It needs to be a values match. You shouldn't ever pressure someone to do something they're not comfortable with, like I did when I convinced the Home Depot employee to let me return a used toilet auger. An open relationship isn't a solution to you and your partner's problems. Try meeting the therapist first. And if he rejects your advances, start trying to figure out what the underlying cause of your issues is. There are alternatives to keep things interesting. Role play, for example, if you have a fetish for biscuits. One of my favorite characters to play is someone who's still in love. But it's a slippery slope. You can't try to keep someone from catching feelings, like the Home Depot employee who saw me walking in with that used toilet auger. Many people believe in the idea of soulmates, but I believe you can make real connections with more than one person. And that's one of my favorite features of LinkedIn. Ultimately, it's not about wanting a monogamous or an open relationship. It's about discovering that our true source of happiness does not and cannot ever come from another person, can only come from within.